G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. And today I've got a quick demonstration, um, which is still what I think quite an important technique, um, which is how to manage stair finishes and stair nosings in Revit. Um, anyone that's modeled stairs before knows that the stair tool by default doesn't really deliver these two tools easily to you. So I'm gonna show you two techniques you can use to achieve these. You can see an example in the thumbnail of roughly what we're gonna achieve in this tutorial. Um, so finishes and nosings. So we're really looking at something like this. So um, in, in one instance, we're going to look at how to achieve a tile finish upon a concrete stair. And we're going to show how to do it as an integrated finish um, in the stair family, but then how to do it as a separate finish. Because sometimes in documentation, you need to show the concrete separately from the finish because the concrete will come first and the finish will be applied later with a mortar. So you do, you do actually need to set out the concrete stair sometimes, um, which can be a problem if you do an integrated stair because you can't hide the tiles. So you can't accurately set out the stair. Um, and then we're gonna look at doing nosing strips. And the reason nosing strips are challenging is because they can't be built as a part of the trade of a stair. They have to be managed separately because they're typically a different width and they typically have different materiality and profile. So a tread profile won't be able to achieve them easily. Uh, so without further ado, let's just jump into Revit. So I've got a model here, we're at the back of my carport. Um, I have a stair that I want to pave. So at the moment, I've just got a, a paving layer at the top of the stair. I'll just go to hidden line mode. And then I have a concrete stair currently leading up to here. What I want to do is apply a 30 millimeter tile finish to the stair. So one option I have is I can build another cast in place stair, which I've called composite in this case. And in its type properties, um, instead of just having a standard uh, structural depth type of uh, run, I've integrated a 30 mil tread and a 30 mil riser zone into the stair definition as well. And what that will do is include uh, these treads and risers in the stair itself. And then it obviously finishes on a riser, so you'd need to set back uh, most of your concrete to it in order to give precedence to the tile finish. Um, so that sort of works. Um, but the problem with this workflow is, again, as I said, you can't hide the tiles. Um, you can't even use the parts tool with stairs in order to hide certain layers of the stair. So instead we have to actually build two stairs. Um, this is the best work call I workflow I found to do isolatable stair finishes. So if I just undo that, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna downset our stair by 30 millimeters. So the top and the bottom are 30 mil lower. You will get this lap of the stair and the floor. Um, that's probably the only consequence of this workflow. And there's no real good way to counteract that effect, unfortunately, due to the way that the stair rise works in Revit. But I don't really think it's an issue. Um, so what I typically do from there is I copy in the same spot by zero mil. So I have a stair on top of a stair. And what I'm gonna do is replace that stair with what's called an assembled stair. So what I've already built is I've built a stair that's definition is basically a 30 mil tread and a 30 mil riser. So I'll just rename that. It's called 50 by 50 at the moment. And I've set the material for both of those to be um, paving. In this case, I've said to extend my tread under my riser. And that as a result gives me uh, this type of stair with uh, no carriage and no concrete. And then all I need to do is get my align tool and push my stair forward. And then I take my stair and I remove the offset. And this will now sit on top of the concrete stair and it's separate, it's isolatable. Um, so it's far easier to deal with um, from a documentation perspective. And the great thing about this too, is you can put your tile forward, um, which is how it typically would be constructed. It would be built against the edge of the slab zone. And what you can do to finish it off is you can just take your finish and align it to the front face of the tile so that the tile meets um, your finish level. But what you may need to do, depending on the makeup of your floor, is you may need to use the paint tool in order to paint the edge of this. Um, otherwise, you will get the full exposed makeup of that floor definition. So I'm just gonna paint that with the paving material as well. So if I just go to shaded mode, you'll see the impact from a surface perspective is pretty much perfect. Um, we have the tile. If I was to cut a section through this in documentation, I could set out the stair as well as the concrete. And I can obviously hide the finish as well in order to leave the concrete behind. Um, one consequence of doing it this way is that you will get two stairs in floor plan, which isn't ideal. So what we need to do is find a way to manage out the concrete stair under the finish stair. See, I get this double cut line. So I have my concrete stair and I have my finish stair. So what we could do is we can add a parameter to the project, 
we'll just add um, stair filter as an instance parameter and it is going to be a um, we'll do a text parameter I prefer text versus yes no because it gives more flexibility and we only want to apply it to stairs okay so now all stairs in our project have a new parameter and it should be located just double check why it hasn't shown up stairs instance might need to be applied at a component level as well. Let's see. Interesting. Um, it appears. Ah, oh, there we go. Under text. I was looking for a yes no um, text, obviously. I just said I'd do that. Cool. Um, so, what we need to do is take the underlying stair, the concrete stair, and we'll say um, has finish above. And what we can do is create a filter and we'll just create a new one and we'll call that stair filter with finish and we want to find all stairs whose criteria meets that uh, that uh, text that we just input so we're going to put in our stair filter parameter equals has finish above then in our view which has a view template if we go up to filters and we apply that filter and we turn off all those stairs our finished stairs will remain and our concrete stairs will be hidden automatically as long as we give them that parameter so i have another stair here for example where i've already done that too so all i have to do is go here add the stair filter to has finish above and you can see it leaves behind the finished stair which is the one on top that way in concrete profile plans you can still see the stair if you need um, and it means you can put the structural stairs on the structure work set and the finish layer on like an architectural or an interiors work set. So it's much easier to control the visibility of the components of your stairs in particular series of drawings, uh, which is great. Um, the last thing I was going to run through is the best way to do stair nosings because um, they're a little bit more complicated. So the way I've set this one up here is I've used an array family. So basically the family is a two directional array. It's going up and it's going across. Um, and I've nested a nosing family in the array. The nosing family is quite simple. It's basically a L-shaped steel strip and then a flat strip. And the reason I've separated those is because the flat strip has a material on top that looks like a nosing strip. So when you're in realistic or rendering mode, it looks like one of those standard um, steel Latham stair nosings. And this is really the only way you can do a stair nosing as far as I know, because you need to be able to control the width of the stair. So basically I've connected all these elements in the parametric array to a set of parameters to control the width, depth, and the height. So you can see here roughly how the array is set up. So the first item is the first strip. So you'll basically place this one step in front of the bottom of your stair, um, and then set the overall depth, overall width, and these elements are all basically nested. Uh, to receive those parameters also in their properties. So then they're, they're nested families, however, they have their parameters locked. So if I go into the array, you'll see that the width is connected to the same width parameter of the array family. And then if I go to my left view, you'll see that I have a height array as well. So I can tell the array how high it is and then how many strips need to fit between. And then the spacings are automatically calculated based on a formula. So the going, for example, is the depth over the count of the number of steps. And the count, the count correction is basically just there to take one from the, the overall number of steps that we're doing because the first step has no, has no strip. And in principle, all you need to do is place them to the right height, width and depth in your model and the array will do the rest of the work. So I can obviously say you know, five strips and the spacing changes, as you can see. I'll go back to 10, which is correct. I could also say that my height of my stair is, is taller and also that the depth of my stair is, is longer as well. And you see the impact that has on the array. So that's probably the best way to handle stair nosings. And obviously if I go into realistic mode, you'll get quite a, quite a decent outcome. So you'll get your stair finish on here and you also get your nosing strip on there as well. So it looks really great. Um, so I can obviously go into realistic mode here as well. And I mean, how, how great does that look? That looks like a proper stair nosing and a proper tile finish on a stair. So great for rendering as well. And the last reason this workflow is great is because you can take this stair 
and you can convert this stair into a sketch stair without affecting your concrete or vice versa. And I could end up changing the profiles on the edges of my tile, say that my stair extends under a planter and my finish doesn't. Um, you can edit those independently of each other. So I can actually take this stair and modify its sketch. And I know that I'm not going to impact uh, my, my actual concrete stair, which is really ideal for how how things are built in the real world um, in certain scenarios. And um, uh, as you probably heard me say a few times in videos, um, I always prefer to model it the way it's built wherever possible, because ultimately the contractors need us to really help them um, using our models in that regard. Otherwise, what's the point of modeling it so detailed? But there you go. So that's um, that's how you can manage stair finishes and noses those in Revit. Um, so I hope you found that interesting and helpful. Um, I've had it asked a few times in my professional career, so hopefully it helps you as well. Um, if you're not following or subscribing, feel free to do so, um, and feel free to tune in for future videos. Um, and any comments or queries, feel free to leave them down below. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.